you do it, you have watched I do watch you guys make news every week. Every so day. It's, it's we are the big political show. I was just wondering if you were wearing black as a consequence of like the death of the political left in the debate last <laughs> night. It was quite something to observe. Uh, you know, don't count the, the dead yet. The bodies. <laughs> Let's give it a little time before we count. Well, Joe Biden, at least. I mean, I was hoping that maybe Whoopi's bell could wake up the Biden campaign if you hit it. I thought he was up. actually he helped, helped, didn't do any harm to himself last night. What time. state's he going to win? I mean, this is a man oh, who the I, fundamental I, premise of the Biden oh. campaign is that he's electable and he can't seem to win elections. So now you have socialist Bernie Sanders against billionaire Michael Bloomberg. Yeah. Well, the Republicans love a billionaire. They love money. So what are you talking about? Well, Michael Bloomberg used to be a Republican. It's yeah. fascinating no, it was that a right Democrat now first. the Democratic Party is likely not going to nominate a Democrat. They're either going to nominate a socialist or someone who some time ago was a Republican. Well, let's let's talk about... None of them. I don't think any of them are going to beat the president. I think we have a raging economy right now. The American family is seeing revenue pour in as a consequence of higher wages, more are you doing productivity, a stump speech, more, more business you know, investment, <laughs> more capital Trump. coming from overseas into our nation. Donald Trump right. was a Democrat first. He was. He was. We've all sort of been politically square dancing for a while. And I think that we're in a time of real political realignment. In so our let, let's talk about your boss for a second. Because yesterday. Well, I don't. My boss are the people of Northwest Florida. Yeah, OK. So yesterday, Trump. <laughs> well, don't uh, dismiss them. It's the highest concentration yeah. of active duty military in the country true. and uh, I know Megan's yeah. dad served there so don't you can it attack me if you want but I'm don't not attack attacking my you I'm asking you a question okay. yesterday Trump announced he's appointing another loyalist of his Rick Grinnell mm -hmm. as his acting director of national Tel intelligence but Grinnell as you know has absolutely no intelligence experience and he's overseeing all 17 of our intel agencies uh, he stands between us and the next ISIS attack and you know, I don't know that it's a smart idea to put somebody who, who's inexperienced like that and who's also a yes man in that position. He's, he's going to have to tell Trump things that he's not going to want to hear. You know how he doesn't like that. Trump doesn't like that. Well, actually, if you look at the team he's assembled with people like John Bolton, the president regularly surrounds himself with people who disagree with him. I think some of the most spirited discussions I don't know I've if had you knew that have, been the with, book. have been with uh, Lindsey Graham, <laughs> Rand Paul, myself, and the president discussing foreign policy, but on Rick Grinnell. 50 years ago, a gay man or a woman would not be able to serve in our intelligence community. There were teams of people Did that, that went to find out if people gay? were gay. Wait a and second. they would, well, just, we'll get into Grinnell's qualifications, but just for a moment, I would like to take a, a second to reflect on the fact that it is a good thing in this country that we do not ban gay people from being able to patriotically serve in the intelligence just community. Just transgendered people. Well, we shouldn't be banning anybody <laughs> based on who they are <laughs> and who they love. Well, let's that's, see that. that's not the kind of Republican I am, and it's not the kind of Republican the president is. So on Rick's qualifications, <laughs> Eight years at the UN, two years uh, in Germany. Yeah. He advised the Security Council. Yeah. And Berlin, where he was active, is one of the hotbeds of intelligence activity. Nothing happens there without the chief of station Most and of the, the ambassador working I'm together. So Rick Grinnell is very qualified. So I you're think it's a break from appointment. Okay, yeah, so that's my argument. The, uh, Germany, by the way, I was reading about him. They think he's very thin skinned, but that's another story. Well, I mean, this is the view, aren't we all? <laughs> I no. have another question for you. No, uh, not. I actually, and you know what? And um, I think we. <laughs> You, yeah, it is just. I, I think we agree on this um, the pre uh, about pardon power. Now, the president has been on a, a, a pardon spree, and many think he's about to pardon Roger Stone, his longtime friend and, and one-time campaign advisor, um, who's being sentenced, I think, any minute now. They're in a break. For uh, crimes of obstructing justice, witness tampering, lying to Congress, do you think Trump should pardon Roger Stone? I do. And I think that oh, it requires on, a review of the pardon power. Come on. Come on. Barack He's Obama pardoned swamp over 1,700 people. But Bill Clinton people pardoned 459 know, people. Those were people Bill he didn't Clinton know. pardoned 16 people who were a member of a Puerto Rican terrorist organization that planned murders at the Bronx of Tavern and here he got in the of United States of America. Bill Perhaps that wasn't the right thing we to do. When we designed our Constitution, there were vestiges of the British monarchy that America still had some reverence for and one was the notion that the executive that the sovereign could extend unlimited grace Did you just for say any the reason oh or uh, no reason but at all. Uh, yeah, that was an element of the, oh, I'm of sorry, the British, I of the British I system the that I was, I was saying was borrowed No, no, I understand. Okay. I, I, what, like what, I, what I was Trump getting is at is can we agree <laughs> that perhaps that pardon power needs to be reviewed and curbed? So, great question. In Federalist 74, Alexander Hamilton writes that the reason we have the pardon power is to serve 
serve as a check on a criminal justice system, which, if allowed to run wild, could create a great sense of sanguinity mm -hmm. in our country. And so I think that if you look at the original intent of the pardon power, right. it cannot be limited. And again, but Trump has pardoned 26 his... people, Obama pardoned over 1,700, so, Bill Clinton pardoned so, 459. So did you, okay. the answer to the question is what? I would, I would agree that you Roger that... Stone should be pardoned okay. if for no other reason okay. that okay. there has been a double standard in this okay. country where people like mm -hmm. Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, and Andrew McCabe, Clapper, Brennan, you had have not faced consequences. Yeah, can, can I just ask you, how about Rob Blagojevich, who flees like a children's <laughs> hospital. Was that a good part? Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't know very much about uh, the, no. the governor of Illinois. No. Uh, I'm not going to get into that one. I, I know Roger. I don't know Blago, and I'll leave that to others uh, to decide. Well, uh, okay, uh, Congressman, I understand that um, Republicans coming on the view, this is a great culture war place to come and like show the leftists what's going on. I get it. My husband works in conservative media. I'm a hardcore conservative. The thing I don't understand, because I'm, I'm not a Trumper, I think that everyone knows that very clear. Policy-wise, he's been great on many things, many things that are very important to me, life, military, the economy, but his character issues are still what holds me and so many, especially, I think, conservative women back from going full throttle with him. And I think you're going to have a problem specifically with college-educated women coming in to the next election cycle. What would you say to women like me who still hold back on the grab them in the blank, attacking war heroes, attacking the Gold Star families, things like that Cheating that just on his wife hold us back? Stars. An un... <laughs> an un... Well, look, if... If cheating on your wife is a disqualification to be president, then you all probably should have impeached, impeached Bill Clinton and they supported did. that. Well, and but, they did. but, but not, not with too. not with all of you waving any pom poms. I'm so sorry, I, I don't know I what that, that means. To, to Megan's question, I want to directly answer Megan's question. Yeah, please. Please. Okay. Donald Trump has a unique ability to get people <laughs> who don't necessarily agree with him mm -hmm. to vote for him. And so I think for women, we're going to have to make the argument particularly that 72% of the new jobs created in this economy have been filled by women. That a lot of women are concerned about the the revenue in their family and whether it's going to support careers and opportunity for themselves, their, their partners, their children. And with seven million new jobs being created, people coming off of welfare, America is in a sense of great renewable renewal. We've got a comeback president running against the throwback left and yeah. the Venezuela oh, wing right. of the Democratic we Party taking over with Bernie ring. Sanders. Oh, come on, the Venezuela Go ring. Go listen to Bernie Sanders. He praises that's, Venezuela. That's, he that's, praises right, Cuba. That, I don't want that for our great. We want to thank that's actually Matt a good line. Gates. 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 Gates.